Tonight, an outbreak of COVID-19 at a Billings Memory Care facility has deadly impacts. Plus, masks are mandatory in Missoula. Will that be the case for college students in Bozeman? And in Helena, citizens speak out over the possibility of eliminating school resource officers. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Thanks for trusting MTN. I'm Tim McGonigal. First at 10 today as the state announces nearly 100 new confirmed COVID-19 cases. Yellowstone County Health Authorities report the virus has claimed three lives at the Canyon Creek Memory Care Center. And it seems the situation has gone from bad to worse since the company first announced the outbreak publicly on Tuesday. Today, Riverstone Health reports since Monday, three residents have succumbed to the virus. A woman in her 70s died on Monday. A woman in her 80s died yesterday. This morning, a man in his 90s passed away. This comes after a two-day total of confirmed cases at the facility reached 66 residents and employees, 32 residents and staff tested negative, and Canyon Creek is waiting for results of 16 tests. A spokesperson for Canyon Creek did talk with MTN this afternoon saying, quote, we were following all guidelines from the state and federal uh, and everything the CDC put out on all protocols. We're not entirely sure of the source yet. We're trying to determine what may have caused it. Chase Salyers also said Canyon Creek needs to be aware of many infectious diseases and says many of the residents are part of the vulnerable, po vulnerable population. Some have memory loss and suffer from underlying health issues. On a Facebook post, Canyon Creek stated it declined to participate in the voluntary sentinel testing program when it was offered by the state of Montana back on June 16th. It goes on to say, quote, that program is designed to test a sample of asymptomatic individuals within particular environments. Well, COVID cases see another record 24-hour jump with the state reporting 96 new cases today. Those three deaths at the Billings facility have raised the state total to 26. Currently statewide, there are nearly 610 active cases with 24 hospitalizations. The 96 cases reported by the state representing the largest one day total yet. In fact, it is the fourth time in the past two weeks the state has seen a record daily increase. Montana cases generally stayed low after the state entered phase one of reopening, but they have been climbing consistently since the state entered phase two on June 1st. And just months after salons were permitted to reopen in Montana, one salon confronted their worst fear, coronavirus in the workplace. Yesterday, Studio Montage Salon and Spa in Great Falls announced that two of their team members tested positive for coronavirus. They have decided to close down the salon as per recommendations by the state and Cascade City County Health Department. The salon will remain closed until business owners feel the environment is safe for both customers and employees. Anyone who was in contact with either of the two infected individuals should have already been contacted by either the salon or CCHD. The city of Missoula has become the first major city in Montana to require the wearing of face coverings. Local officials have approved a rule that requires people over the age of 12 to wear face masks in a public setting. The motion passed unanimously. The Missoula County Health Officer said face coverings are safe for anyone over the age of 2 and she strongly encourages people from ages 2 to 12 to wear a mask even though they're not required. And Montana State University is making safety preparations for incoming students this fall. On Wednesday, the Montana University system issued a recommendation requiring students wearing face masks on campus. MSU says they're planning to follow the guidelines put forth by the Office of the Commissioner of Higher Learning. In fact, the university has already come up with a plan to distribute what they're calling clean cat kits. It's going to contain a cloth face mask, a spray bottle of disinfectant, some microfiber cloths, and hand sanitizer that folks on campus can use to take personal control over making sure that the spaces that they use every day, whether they're desks, podiums, or chairs, are, are clean right at the moment that they use it. Those kits will be distributed to every student, faculty member, and staff member at the university this fall. Glacier National Park officials are looking to potentially start a ticketed entrance at West Glacier to combat traffic uh, congestion. Glacier National Park sp uh, spokesperson Gina Kurzman says traffic congestion this year has been difficult to manage. She says because of the coronavirus, the east side of Glacier National Park is closed, which concentrates all park visitors to the west side of the park. Because of this congestion, the park looks to potentially ticket the 
West Glacier entrance, those tickets would be purchased per car, not per person. The guests would have to make advance reservations online to be able to enter the park on the day they wanted to enter. There would be a couple of different options. We would provide um, a ticketed option 30 days in advance, about half of them would be available 30 days in advance, and then we would have some available two days in advance. Kurzman adds if the park moves forward with the ticketing system, tickets would be $30, equivalent to a seven-day park pass. If you've already purchased a season pass, the prices will not apply. Zion, Rocky Mountain, and Yosemite National Parks all have similar ticketing systems. However, Kurzman says if the public strongly dislikes the system, the park will consider not moving forward with it. If the system is implemented, it would start in late July. New tonight, the Helena City Commission heard testimony today for uh, both for and against keeping police officers in Helena Public Schools. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has a closer look at the issues raised in the discussion on school resource officers. The Helena Police Department's school resource officer program currently places four uniformed officers in campuses like Helena Middle School. But some people are calling for removing those officers, questioning whether they're the best way to address issues in schools. During Thursday's meeting, Helena Police Chief Steve Hagen provided information about what school resource officers do, from simply being present on campus to investigating threats and responding to welfare checks. Hagen says the relationships they form with students are key, and if SROs are removed from schools, the department will still likely have to respond to the same incidents. The responding officers may not have the training to work with these students. They will not have the time to work with the school, student, or family and they will not know the students for their situation. Local school administrators also highlighted cases where they believe the relationships between SROs and students have led to better outcomes in difficult situations. District leaders say with challenges around planning for the upcoming year, they're concerned they won't be able to make a comprehensive plan for replacing SROs if they're eliminated. I truly believe that a reduction would be a detriment to our students, to our educators, to our families, and to our schools. But the commission also heard from a former Helena School District student and a current parent who said they felt having uniformed officers in the school created a less welcoming environment for students. If the first person to respond to a child in crisis is a police officer, that has a far different impact on that child and the other students in the classroom than does if a trained mental health professional, a social worker, a counselor, or someone else is the first person to respond. Advocates say evidence suggests that black and indigenous students and those with disabilities were more likely to have negative interactions with SROs, and that having officers in schools doesn't lead to better outcomes for kids. What we are asking for is that we take this opportunity to really consider what effective policing looks like and be realistic about what is useful and what is effective and what is not. The city also took extensive public comment from supporters and opponents of SROs. Some people supporting the program also demonstrated outside the city county building during the online meeting. Leaders encouraged the public to continue weighing in on the issue. I want you to know we're taking all of these seriously and um, we'll continue this process because we know this process is important. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The City Commission took no immediate action tonight. Leaders said they'll plan another meeting in the coming weeks. Well, there was plenty of blue skies and sunshine today. Is there more coming up? For the answer, we head on over to our friend Elizabeth Copeland, who has a look at our first forecast. Hey there, guys. I'll be filling in again for Thursday night and Friday. And tonight, it is a nice warm one out there as we have much warmer temperatures this time right now than it was this time yesterday. So we are about 5 to 10 degrees warmer in central and eastern Montana in the last 24 hours. So it was definitely a warmer one out there today and a lot more sunshine as well. We were tracking those 80s and upper 70s earlier this afternoon. Now we're holding steady in the upper 70s before we drop down to the mid 70s here in just the next hour or so as that sun sets. So 82 in Helena, and we're holding steady in those upper 70s elsewhere across north central and northeast Montana. Now, as we head through tomorrow, that's when some changes are going to start occurring. Tonight, we're getting down to the 50s across Great Falls, actually staying mostly clear. But then by tomorrow morning, we'll be waking up to showers in the forecast. So we'll be tr uh, tracking more of those showers early in the morning and let you know when those continue to move out coming up in our extended forecast. 
Thanks, Elizabeth. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, says, uh, says tonight that the president can't ignore subpoenas for his tax returns just because he is the president. But that doesn't mean the American people are going to see how much the president is worth or where he spends his money anytime soon. Our George St. George is at the Supreme Court in Washington with a look at whether the president's taxes will come out before the election. The U.S. Supreme Court tends to save their most anticipated cases until the very last day of term, and that's exactly what they did today. Remember, today was actually two cases involving President Trump's tax returns. In the first case, it asked the question, can Congress get access to President Trump's financial records? The second case, Trump v. Vance, can a New York District Attorney get access to President Trump's financial records? Both cases are linked to investigations into porn star Stormy Daniels and whether or not she received any hush money prior to the 2016 election. But today was really a win and a loss for President Trump. It's a loss for President Trump because justice has ruled that the president isn't protected from subpoenas just because he is president. He's just like you and me, they said. But it's a win for the president because justice has said lower courts must rule on these cases again, which likely delays this past the election. But remember, this case was never really about whether the public would see President Trump's tax returns. But the belief here in Washington was that if Congress had the information, if a New York prosecutor had the information, it would be leaked to the press. At the Supreme Court in Washington, I'm Joe St. George. Well, the extension on your taxes is about to be up. What you can do now to help simplify that process when we come back. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Welcome back. It's that time of year, tax time, but with this year's extended deadline, tax season isn't quite as rushed as most years. One Great Falls CPA explained that many filers took advantage of the extra time to get their taxes done, but she estimates that 30% still waited until the last month or so to file. If you still haven't filed, you'll likely need an extension until October to give CPAs a chance to do the taxes of those who secured their spot first. We still have people that have yet to bring in their information to us. I know a lot of, like our firm, we have clients that have brought their stuff in that we're still working on and we can't take those people that bring their stuff in today and put them ahead of the line. If you haven't yet filed and are planning on doing so on your own, Morrison recommends making sure you have all necessary documents ready to minimize additional communication after submitting your tax information to a CPA or tax service. Well, with bars now operating at 75% capacity, a popular way for people in the Helena area who have had a bit too much to drink could be in trouble. MTN Sam Hoyle takes a look at the Home Free Ride program. In 27 establishments dotted across the Tri-County Licensed Beverage Association, there's signs for the Home Free Ride program, a program where patrons of those establishments can get an Uber home free of charge simply by asking the bartender. Bruce McCullough, president of the Beverage Association and owner of Miller's Crossing, a bar near the downtown Helena area, said in almost three years the program has kept about 3,000 impaired drivers off the road. Well, the bars have always gotten a black eye when it comes to DUIs and and deaths, alcohol-related deaths, so we decided that maybe it was time that the taverns or tavern associations started to do their part. However, as establishments are just getting back to somewhat normal, McCullough says the program is in trouble. If things continue the way they're going, we probably would have to look at maybe either totally revamping the program, maybe charging the bars more, which I have a problem with doing because at 25 bucks a month, they don't have a problem with it. You start charging $50, $100 a month, then they're going to go, eh, I don't know if I want to do it anymore. Each establishment pays a $25 fee per month to get the service. And with business being slow, McCullough is worried about some establishments opting out of the program due to the cost. But Ron Bolin, owner of Sleeping Giant Lanes, an establishment inside the program, said the resource it provides is far too valuable. And even if the association has to raise the cost, it would still be worth it. Would you be willing to pay more for this service? I would, yeah. Um, I think that, you know, with with the consequences for not doing what we're doing um, is far greater than what we're paying to get people home safely. Reporting in Helena, Sam Hoyle, MTN News. The forecast for that early morning drive coming up will have when the rain ends and sunshine returns in our extended forecast. Get Storm Tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Elizabeth Copeland. 
Hey there, one. Uh, thanks for letting me fill in tonight and tomorrow night to end your work week. We've been mostly dry today. We saw a lot of those blue skies across our area and tomorrow we'll see much of the same, but we do have just a quick disturbance moving through late tonight, early tomorrow morning that we will be tracking that brings some light changes to the forecast for our early morning hours. And we can see that just off to our west as that disturbance moves in right across really northwest Montana right now. That's going to bring showers and some possible storms to our area as we head through tomorrow afternoon. So taking a look there, we're still going to see a lot more of that activity push in for our area, but there's going to be short lived showers as that disturbance starts to ramp up here in western Montana in just the next few hours be affecting our morning commute in central Montana tomorrow morning. Until then, enjoy the blue skies out there. I have our Opportunity Bank iCam out in Helena where the sun is setting, making for a beautiful sunset tonight with those blue skies and a couple of clouds here and there. Otherwise, we're still seeing a bluebird day across the northeast corner of the state and in north central Montana where it is 76 and we'll continue to hold again in those 70s for the next few hours. That sun sets a little later tonight and that's where we're going to take that big drop in temperatures down to the 50s for overnight lows, but it feels much warmer out there. That dew point though is going to be on the rise as that moisture moves in here. So tracking it out really hour by hour for the next couple hours, we're going to see all that moisture continue mostly to make its way first into northwest Montana before slowly by 6 a.m. jumping over the Rocky Mountain front. So areas closer to the high line, right north of Great Falls, places like really from power all the way to the Canadian border. We'll see those light to moderate showers for your 6 a.m. commute as well as Helena starting to see those light showers by then. Moderate showers then start moving in to even some heavier showers right around 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. So Great Falls down to Butte, that line across I-15 is going to see more of those moderate showers just in time as you head out the door. So definitely grabbing the umbrella, the rain jackets for the early morning hours. And then those showers are going to continue on that same line as that disturbance pushes through through Haver, Jordan, Billings, all through 11 a.m. And then by the afternoon hours, we'll see that storm system push off to the northeast and we'll have a little extra heat by this time, which means that those storms will start to brew into some stronger storms possible for the northeast corner. But if you take a look behind those storms, not too many of the clouds in the forecast. So just as fast as those showers move in, they move out and we'll only have a slight chance of some stronger storms possible, an isolated severe storm possible as well for that northeast corner where we do have a marginal risk. That's only the first step up for that severe forecast. So we might have one severe storm possible with some frequent lightning, some gusty wind and some large hail for the northeast corner as those storms move through especially during those afternoon hours. So really the impacts for us tomorrow are going to be really to that dry forecast, especially early in the morning for western and central Montana, where we're going to track some scattered showers 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Again, noon is when we're going to see those storms brew across the northeast corner. But all of us will see that sunshine as the storms pass through later on Friday evening. So the weekend will be setting up to be another warm one. Tomorrow, we're still in the 80s after those showers move through quickly in Great Falls. The sunshine returns to the afternoon, 89 on Saturday. No chances of rain there and we'll hold steady in those 80s for the weekend. So the weekend's looking dry and sunny. Blue skies stay in the forecast for us through Wednesday afternoon as well. The only chance that Great Falls and Helena have for an isolated shower come next Thursday. So these widespread showers will only last in our forecast early Friday morning for those two cities. And then we'll hold steady in the 70s next week with plenty of sunshine in the forecast. Thanks, Elizabeth. And when we come back, ladies are taking aim. They're one of the fastest growing groups to get into shooting sports. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Women in the Great Falls area looking to work on their target practice will have their chance in July and August. MTN's Isaiah Dunk takes us to Ulm for Ladies League Practice Night at the Great Falls Trap and Skeet Club. Pull! Well, I may be shooting tonight, but every Thursday night for the next six weeks, it's Ladies League at the Great Falls Trap and Skeet Club and the number of women participating in shooting sports is increasing. This will be the fourth year the club has a league specifically for women. Club member Mary Jacobson said the numbers in Great Falls have jumped from about 30 the first year to about 60 last year, reflecting a national trend. Our women's numbers were going up. More women were wanting to learn how to shoot and get involved. So the reason we started the Ladies League is to kind of give them, especially new shooters, um, the avenue of 
trying it out with other women. For lack of a better way to put it, give it a shot and see if they liked it. Club president Mike Hausman said in his most recent 15 years with the club, some women would shoot in mixed leagues when their husbands participated, but the new women-only league has been a huge success. We have quite a few of the ladies that came up here the first year and had never held a gun in their life, and now they're club shooters, you know. Um, like I said, it's all about the ladies tonight and just having a fun time. No judgment, just come up and shoot. If you hit three, it doesn't matter. You know, just come up and have fun. One of the key differences on the Ladies League schedule is a different theme each Thursday night. We started with theme night, beach, uh, biker, um, prom night, which prom night has been one that we've stuck with over and over again because everybody seems to love it to get out there. It's kind of a little bit of a handicap to try and shoot in heels and dresses, but it, you get a kick out of it. We all laugh at one another and have a good time. And though tonight was practice night for the Ladies League, Jacobson says there are still spots available. However, if the numbers get too big, they may have to split time for social distancing. In Ulm, Isaiah Dunk, MTN News. The competition begins next Thursday, goes through August 20th. League fees are $65. Well, it may sound like one of Jim Bridger's tall tales, but near Whitehall, there are rocks that sound like church bells. This rare geologic formation is known as the ringing rocks. When struck lightly with a hammer, they sound similar to a brass bell. There are only a handful of sites in the entire world where the ringing rock phenomena can be observed, and the Montana Formation draws visitors from all over. However, the road to the rocks is narrow and steep, with a high-clearance four-wheel drive recommended. I've never heard a rock do that before. Normally, they just clunk to make a dull set thud, but I've never heard anything ring like that before, especially a rock. If you're looking for something to do while social distancing, the ringing rocks can be a fun trip. We'll be right back. All right, so we're waking up tomorrow morning to those showers, grabbing the umbrellas, rain jackets as you make your way out the door early on Friday morning. But if you have the outdoor plans at the lake Friday afternoon, do expect a little breeze. But other than that, perfect day for the lake as we see a lot more of the sunshine back in the low 80s. Saturday taking another jump in temperatures to the upper 80s and even holding steady in those mid 80s on Sunday, leaving that sunshine in the forecast for the next seven days as we continue to hold steady in the 70s and 80s even through next week. Well, finally, the game of Scrabble is changing for the better. The North American Scrabble Players Association has announced that racial or ethnic slurs are being removed from the game's official word list. More than 200 words will be removed from the association's list. Some words that are potentially offensive but not considered slurs are still on the word list. Hasbro, which has no say on the list, says it has worked to remove these type of offensive words every time it prints a new list. All right, that's all the time we have. Make sure to join Montana this morning starting at 530. Have a great night.